So housing supply and affordability amongst the biggest challenges in our city. Next to transport, they are the issues that Aucklanders most want us to fix. Today I want to offer you my perspective on Auckland's housing challenges uh, and the range of actions we are taking to address them. It's well known that Auckland's rate, uh, Auckland rates poorly on housing affordability. Uh, a recent international survey by Demographer uh, rates Auckland as severely unaffordable with a medium multiple of house price to income of seven. That means that the average house price in Auckland is currently seven times the average salary, far beyond what most banks are prepared to lend to a first-time buyer, and it's the first-time buyers we are particularly focused on. This lack of affordability has a big impact on family budgets, locks out many potential first-time buyers, and leads to overcrowding and poor social outcomes in many of our communities. And if you're Aucklanders, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For business, there's a high cost too in terms of productivity, competitiveness, and for some sectors, a struggle to att attract workers to Auckland and retain them. And these pressures are only growing. We know Auckland needs an average of 13,000 new homes a year over the next 30 years to meet the demands of our growth. The recent census showed a slight slowdown. You have a look over the last 30 years, you'll see slowdowns and increases. It nets out 2 to 2.5% growth per annum. That is what we need to plan towards, and the Auckland plan, the unitary plan, reflects those projections. But with steady improvements we have seen recently, we're still only on track at this point to build 5,000 new homes this year. Now, our consent shows that we have had significant build in resource and building consents, something like 34% last month's figures alone. But this is just not an issue for today. It is a challenge for the long term as well. Statistics New Zealand estimates that Auckland could add a million people in the next 30 years. This is, of course, an estimate. In fact, for the last three census periods, Auckland's population growth has been significantly higher than Statistics New Zealand projected. In the last seven years alone, we added a population the size of Tauranga. So, if the long-term trend is anything to go by, Auckland is a city that continues to be on the move. And there is little to suggest that we'll be slowing down anytime soon. You all in this sector would hope not. So, what can we do to address the very real and present challenges this presents for our housing sector and your industry? First, we need to be clear about the factors that are driving Auckland's current housing predicament. Supply of ready-to-build land is clearly one of the most pressing issues. But we won't solve Auckland's housing challenges by focusing totally on land supply. Unless land has been subdivided, serviced and built on by the private sector, we won't get the affordable homes that Aucklanders have asked for and need. And there are other challenges. The pace of our population growth, the practical limitations of our current district plans, and as we know, the uh, unitary plan is now notified, still another three years away from being fully operationalised. The cost of building materials, and this is a matter that you are considering, and I really appreciate the way in which the Minister has addressed that in his speech today, as much as 30% more in New Zealand than in Oz. And the loss of capacity in the construction industry after the financial crisis, we estimate in Auckland alone, we lost three quarters of our building industry. New Zealand also has very open economy, which means our fortunes depend a great deal on the state of the global economy and the attractiveness of those other employment markets, particularly around the Asian Pacific Basin. The global downturn created challenges for our housing sector, but so too will the recovery. As the world economy improves, competition for funds internationally will heat up, putting pressure on interest rates and, in turn, new pressure on our housing market. So, if we're serious about addressing our housing challenges, it's clear that we need to respond on a number of fronts. And we need to respond through collaboration across all of the key players. First of all, the Minister of Housing then the Mayor of Auckland. This is about us working together as a team and what underpins the Housing Accord, all of us in it together, knowing the problem, working together to provide the answer. That Housing Accord is one example of where we're making progress. It's not the silver bullet.
but it will help bring forward new large-scale housing developments that may otherwise have sat on the back burner, and will do so in a framework that meets the objectives of both central government and our council. Greater affordability, better urban design, and a reasonable balance between building up and building out. The Accord is not yet delivering to the extent that I want it to in terms of affordable housing, but I'm pushing as hard as I can in this area. The consenting process under the Accord will bring approval times down from an average of two years to no more than three months for brownfields developments and six months for greenfields. We recently announced the first tranche of special housing areas where the new faster consenting process will apply. Over time, developments approved in this first tranche could bring as many as 6,000 new housing units to the market, including a high component of affordable homes. The second tranche, on a similar scale, was recently approved by our council, has gone to government for their approval. Remember, this is an agreement where both parties need to agree the SHAs, and we hope will be announced before Christmas. And this is just the beginning. I'm hugely, hugely encouraged by the interest from developers and confident we will be approving many more in the coming months. So focus on both greenfields and brownfields. And I think you'll see from the first two tranches when they're finally announced that we're actually getting not only regeneration and redevelopment in our existing urban platform, but we're also taking on some greenfields development. And the pace of the consenting we hope is uh, hugely incentivising to the sector to encourage them to get out, go for it, bring us their very best proposals on the hope and expectation, one, that we'll approve them under the Housing Accord, and secondly, get them going with some real pace. The Accord also uh, includes a commitment to investigate the high cost of building materials in New Zealand and recommend options for managing this issue. This work is currently underway in conjunction with the government and we are getting updates from the Minister in exactly the same way as, as you have done this afternoon. Importantly, the Housing Accord will also provide a testing ground for the unitary plan. My uh, assessment of the way the Housing Accord is working out, and certainly under the SHAs, is those SHAs are providing you and I, the sector, the council, the government and the community with an opportunity to show best practice under the unitary plan and deliver it with pace. So the rules of the unitary plan will apply to all the new um, applications and options coming through under the uh, special housing areas. This means that over the next three years, as formal consultation on the plan is carried out by the government, appointed commissioners, we will have an opportunity to see firsthand what it can deliver in terms of affordability, greater housing choice and high quality urban design. So once fully operative, the unitary plan will be central to addressing our housing challenges. For a start, it will replace the uh, restrictions of the current metropolitan urban limit with a wider rural urban boundary, opening up more opportunities for new developments. It will also deliver greater flexibility within the urban boundary. More housing choices obviously focus around regeneration and sometimes with height. Clearer urban design rules, and this was the thing that came pumping through from the hundreds of public meetings that we had through the unitary plan. We want a city that's superbly designed and much more development, commercial and residential, around our town centres. I was up recently attending the opening of a four-storey apartment block in Grey Lynn called the Isaac. Stunning design, superb location, by and large sold out at the time of opening, and that is the type of development within the urban envelope that one is not only attractive to our community, but secondly really adds value to the amenity of the city. The plan also has integrated public transport at its heart with new developments concentrated around our major transport hubs in Newland and Manukau with some of the uh, apartment developments that we're seeing coming up in and around those communities now as a sort of reflector of the type of focus a uh, typical international city will see and now we are seeing. Over the next few months I'll be establishing a cross-sector working group to recommend ways to ensure that the unitary plan delivers best practice developments in both brownfields and greenfields areas and this will focus on excellent urban design coupled with the high level of sustainability 
and affordability. It would be great to have some of you who are present here as a part of that process. We will be identifying and actively promoting exemplars in urban design across Auckland. Building a better city is uh, about much more than just de minimis rules. We also need to build a culture of collaboration around great urban design and placemaking. We're now into formal consultation period on the unitary plan. It's in the hands of the government appointed commissioners for the next three years before it comes back to our council for final sign-off and we're very keen to make sure it's operationalised at the end of this term. The plan at this point reflects a long uh, period of pre-engagement with the community, including some of yours. Uh, we aim to notify the best plan possible and by and large I think we have been pretty successful. It will continue to change as a result though over this next stage and I encourage you all to have input as part of that process. It's great to see you all, my very best to you as you consider the future of the industry now and over the next few years. Great, thank you very much.